All right. Sorry, I muted you guys. Someone was in the middle of the sentence. But we are starting uh, 18 and 19, two days, right? Arab Shabbos. Hamas, Hayom Yom. The big book. All right. Wait a second here. Got myself a little bit more adjusted. Okay. Okay, today is Hayom Yom, 18 Thomas. The Alter Rebbe said of Rabbi Moshe Velenker, and it's brought in the footnote here, and is known he was one of the more choshev Hasidim. We'll see what makes him more choshev to the Alter Rebbe choshev, meaning, you know, the Alter Rebbe had a special place for him because of he has certain qualities of which we will see. Moshe has, and the Alter Rebbe said of him, he has moichin de godless, which literally means big brains, right, simply. But in English, they translate magnitude of intellect, and we'll see it goes even further than this. Uh, magnitude of intellect, capacious, big. And in his 10 years of toil, he has attained, this is the, I'll continue the Alter Rebbe's uh, quote about him, that in his 10 years of toil, he has attained through his labors a powerful, capacious, broad, big, wide-ranging intellectuality. And in Hebrew, the, uh, the, it says, it's, well, it's Yiddish in Hebrew. He says, Hoter he worked hard. He worked in English, in, in English, in Yiddish, is working very hard to create moichen rachovim, broad brains. And here I'm going to read the footnote because it, it's a, this is a, quite an interesting insight. Broad brains, and in the, in the language using big brains, etc. The term broad intellect. This is a footnote. If you look using the same edition, footnote eight. Uh, this, he says this expression, broad brains, or broad, moichin rechobin, broad brains, uh, defies translation. Now, here's the point. It does not refer to Reb Moish's broad spectrum of knowledge or to his being broad-minded, right? Open-minded, broad-minded. Rather, it describes the nature and the intensity and the power of his ability to absorb things. There's his absorptive ability, ability, and his breadth of his intellectuality, his faculty of intelligence, absorption. That's the key word I wanted to bring forth. It isn't how smart you are. It's what that smart, how you apply that smart to absorb it into your inner and vital ways of being. And we may as well do uh, Shabbos because it's short also. Nine, it's short. Uh, 19th time. It's a practice of my father, the Rabbi Rashab. This is interesting. When, when traveling, even when spending months in one place, every day he would recite the Phyllis Adera, the prayer for travelers, daily uh, without saying a brocha, because he, but he, but he was, he's on the way. You could say that really if you're not even traveling, we're always on the way, but this Yom Yom doesn't go that far. Okay, uh, we're going to do, to the, obviously, today, Ere Shabbos and Shabbos, Lessons in Tanya. That is the whole of chapter 6, which begins on 1058, but the actual uh, inside of the, the Befnim, the inside, begins on 1059, where we're going to start. Okay. Right here. Chapter 6, um, bottom of page 190. So we have a brief introduction. Last night as we were driving up to Tannersville, we got hit a big traffic jam, and we started talking about the Hashkacha Pratis, about whatever's happening. And it turned into a wonderful opportunity for to Fabrang a little. We had four, four of us in the car. And one of the things we Fabrach about was uh, what it mean? What did the Rebbe mean? Not the, what did the Rebbe mean? What is meant by something that the Rebbe said? Um, often that Geula, redemption, is simply put bringing the Aleph into Goyla. <clears throat> what that means is the Aramaic word for Gullus, 
Gimel Vav Lamed He, Gimel Vav Lamed Goyla, if you put the Aleph between the Gimel and the Vav, you get Geula. So Geula is just the, a little bit of something else, a touch, a spice of something that's added to the normative state that we're in today, normative meaning without any opening up of the eyes, without any avoider, without any, uh, you know, in, infusion of stuff, the stuff that we're learning in Pasidus and the raising of our, without the raising of consciousness, which we call gullus. And why I'm bringing that up is because it's going to relate to this Tanya, which really is in a certain sense, uh, the relation, I mean, if you, we listen to this, uh, as I was learning it earlier, the relationship between Shuva and Geula, because this is a Geras at Shuva returning, Alta the Shuva, Alta Geula, as the Frida Karebe said, the faster we do Shuva, the quicker we get to Geula, because Shuva is the process of Geula. That's what we're going to delve into, how that that works uh, in today's uh, today's time. Okay, Perik Vod. Amnam. However, however, what? He was telling us that the, and he is, he has told us for a little bit now, that Helek Havaya Amoy, that Hashem, we are his people, we are a part of Hashem, and meaning we are, there is invested in us the Yud Ke Vav Ke, the letters of God's name, and with that, those letters of God's name, we are infused with an effusion of godliness okay and when that effusion of godliness gets interrupted we use the muscle of uh if you have a breath that's being blown to into a balloon but someone puts a, something in front of your mouth the balloon isn't going to blow up if there's a barrier somehow and these are metaphorical barriers between the effusion of godliness and each one of us or uh, and we use another muscle we the alter Rebbe, of course not us a rope, a rope that says that uh, that uh, Yaakov Hevel Nachalasecha. A rope is his inheritance, and the rope meaning there are six hundred and thirteen strands in this rope, and if you clip one of them, it breaks the flow. And in the time of the Beis Hamikdash, if a person did activities which blocked the flow, avoinas iniquities, that's the word he uses. Uh, so a person would pass away at a shorter period of time than what would be normally his lifespan. Now he says, Amnam, this, that they would pass away shorter than their normative lifespan, was now back inside. This was at a time, the time of the temple, when the Jewish people were at a much, at a higher level. Because the Shechina, the divine presence, which is Malchus, the divine, the awareness, the effusion of the king's kingdom. Sarah, I think, put something in the, in the Yom Yom, maybe it wasn't in, in, in this one, about the king is the heart of the Jewish people. He's not the head so much as he's the heart. And in the heart of God, so to speak, was exist, extant and shining, illuminating in the Beis HaMikdash. And that's when, and that language is called Shechina, the Shechina, the divine presence, which is Malchus, Hashem's kingdom, which is the lower hay. Remember, the upper hay is Bina, Yud K, the lower hay, and we're Tashuv hay. This is all built on Tashuv hay, Tashuva, return, restore the hay, the upper hay and the lower hay. The lower hay is Malchus, which is the Shechina. And back inside, now the Shechina was dwelling openly, I'll put that word in. Israel in the king in the in the holy temple. And at that time, all the Jewish people received the life force, the the nefesh Bahamas, the enlivening soul, and its connection to the body was an open channel and received direct flow only from the bechinas penimius hashefa from the inner dimension of God's flow, Shema Shpia, top of page Sadiq Vav, Shema Shpia, excuse me, Shema Shpia, Ein So Borachud, which the infinite one caused to flow to the Nefesh Bahamas in the body, Adi Shem Havaya, through the Shem Havaya, 
the Yud Ke Vav Ke, as we said above, in an open way. Yud Ke Vav Ke was wide open, nothing impeding the flow. Ah, however, after she ordered me after the Jewish people, inclusive of us, we're part of the Jewish people. The whole world in general descended, but the Jewish people, after she ordered me after the Jewish people descended from their level, the Gorembu, the and caused with their deeds, Soid Galus Shechina, the secret of the exile of the Shechina, which is this is called in, in Aramaic. Shechina Bigaluta, the Shechina in Galus. So number one, know that we are the cause of Galus and we are the cause of Geula. Right? We have the ability to flip it either way. And that's kind of what the subject of this chapter is, the ability that we have to flip the flow from pure Kedusha, which would be open eyes, open your eyes, where there's nothing impeding, right? That's Geula. Or blurry, blurry eyes. That's not the muscle on the page. This is the muscle that the, the Rebbe always uses. Open your eyes. But the opposite of opening your eyes is somewhat closing, somewhat diminishing. Or in our, in our language here, some kind of splitting, tearing, blocking, blocking the breath, uh, ripping one strand, etc., etc. So all of that is called soid galus shechina, the secret of the exile of the shechina. And the shechina is the lower hay. Of the Yud Kevav Ke, Mishnah Kosev has written. It's written, Sholcha Imachem, and it says, through your sins, your Imachem, your mother, your mothers really were banished. Shechina is feminine, so here it goes on. It could be daughter, sister, mother, wife. Here is mother. It's a pasuk. Through your sins, you you you. Shulcha, you sent away, sent away literally, like a shliach, shliach akan. You sent it away. Your mother was sent away through through your sins. The hainu meaning what? She yoder hashbos bechinas heitato. That we, they, the Jewish people, us, caused the uh, the descent of the heitato of the letter, the second hey in Hashem's name, Malchus. And now, in other words, Melech HaMashiach. Mashiach is Melech. Malchus in the state of exile, that Melech HaMashiach is concealed. And in doing so, we caused the Shekhinah, the, the sense of the presence of God, the kingship of God, the open awareness of godliness in the world, to descend one level after another, Lamata Mata, below, below. Until that holy flow of Kedusha was enclosed in, became enclosed, twisted a bit, perverted, it became uh, redirected into Klippus Noiga, right? The, the two, there is, there's the Sitra Achra, the other side, which is Klippa, Klippus Noiga, or Gimel Klippus at Timaeus, the cloudy side, or the really dark side. And then there's Kedusha, two sides. Kedusha and Eklipa, you have two opposite sides. So through our behaviors, we caused the descent and rechanneled, redirected the, whole, the flow of holiness into Yud Sviris of Neige, Eklipa's Neige. Hamash be a shef of Echayas al Yideh Hamazolas, which the way that flow that's twisted or perverted from uh, the holiness into Eklipa's Neige, the way that flow reaches us is through Aladeh Mazolis, the constellations, the constellations, the, you know, the, the constellations in the sky. The Cholzibah Hashemayim, the Hasorim Shalehim, and all the hosts of heaven, and the lit, literally princes or uh, officers which ruled over them, the Kolachai Hagashmi, and which are now the channels for which all life, physical life, comes into down into. And all the plant life as well is all receiving its life, yes, from holiness, but holiness as it has been drawn into the Sitter Achra, into the other side. And my Marizal, as our sages say, have said, they said, There's no blade of grass down here below, it doesn't have a mazel above. So 
This is the, the notion of all the constellations in the sky are not just window dressing. They're, uh, they're, I mean, they are, they're beautiful, right? But they're channels. They're physical, physical manifestation or physical embodiments of the spiritual energy that's coming into this world through Klippus Neuge. Neuge means it's all neutral. The, the trees, the sky, the, uh, the vegetables that we eat, right? Uh, but we can take it even further than Klippus Neuge, God forbid, and make it and suck it into the levels of Klippa, which are totally dark. So as a result of the sin, of our iniquities, things changed from the time of the Beis Amikdash throughout history, inclusive of now. Of course, now, now the awakening is, 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 the reawakening is happening. But this and so far, we're just describing before the reawakening, the darkening, the, the gullus. And because the, the life force from Hashem, from Kedusha, because nothing doesn't come from God. But since that life force has been blocked, twisted, crooked, uh, all the other masholim that we do, therefore, even a sinner, the Paishi Yisrael, and one who commits iniquities, is able, is able to receive life to their bodies, the nafshom habahamis and their animal souls, kemeshar balechayim, just like any other animal, mamish. Meshikosev is written in Tilim, nimshil kebehemis nidmu. I compare myself to uh, to animals. The other Not only can we, can we? I don't mean this in a positive way. Are we able to now live, but living from the klippas noiga, as opposed to pure kedusha before? the channeling of Kedusha into Klippus Neuge, not only are we able to live in that respect, just like animals live, and remember, there are kosher animals, right? What's wrong with being a kosher animal? Well, there is something wrong with that, because we are intrinsically much more than that. When we do this, we have a Bahira, and we have chosen to do like this. So our uh, drawing down Kedusha has a dimension to it that the animal doesn't have. The animal is meant to be this way. We are not meant to be this way. So it's even more serious that we're doing this. With a much power, much greater power, and a much greater strength. According to what's explained in the Holy Zohar in Pashas Bekudim, it says, This is not a quote, this is translating of the Zohar. Hashem, that the life force and the flow, that all of the life force and the flow which flows to a person down here below at the time and in the moment that he does something which is evil in the eye of Hashem, b'maisa, indeed, oi b'dibur, or speech, oi b'hurin ha or thoughts of a bearer. These are the three garments of the soul, thought, speech, and action that we learned in Lakuti Amorim. So, when that happens, I call Nishba Everything is flowing to that person from the chambers of the Sitrachar. Amuvorim Shom Kodesh, as explained in the Holy Zohar. So here's the point. We have free choice. Closed eyes, open eyes. It's up to us. Whether the person will receive the life from the chambers of the Sitra Akhra, the other side, or from the chambers of Kedusha, from which flow all thoughts which are good and holy. Because this is built on a principle, the principle that's articulated in the Torah, that God made this opposite that. And it's up to us which one we choose. That's He didn't say that here. I just said that. What he now says, the chambers of the Sitarachra, they receive and suck their life force through the enclosement and the drawing down, the chaining down, of the Shefa, of the flow, of the Yud Sphiris Anoiga. There are Yud Sphiris of Kedusha, 10 Sphiris of Kedusha, and Zela Umaze, opposite, there are 10 Sphiris of, uh, no, of Klippus Anoiga. 
Akalula Bechinas Toivira. So there's a, a potential for good and bad. This potential for good and bad, and this actualization of that potential started at the Bechinas Aitzadas, through what we call the category of the, the, the tree of knowledge, the action of the tree of knowledge, but that's a whole category. We, there is a tree of knowledge, and we can do this way or we can do that way. As though, as is known to those who know the Kabbalah. In other words, you know that the Maisa, the deed of back at the beginning of eating from the Eitzadas, is an event which we are living with continually throughout all of history, right? And it's up to us which way we're going to go with this. Having created darkness, having brought darkness in the world through the, uh, the sin of the Eitz Adas, it's a, it's a sin after all, the choice is up to us whether we're going to continue to live in that or we're going to have an ability, uh, exercise our ability to blow it away and allow the breath to flow again without any impediment. Rivka, your hand is up. Yeah, I want to clarify something just before we go sure. on the next day. Um, I, I, I may have misheard you, but I thought at one point you seemed, it seemed like you were trying to equate Klipas Noga with Sitra Akra. I mean, we have two extremes. We have Kedusha and we have Sitra Akra, but no, Klipas Noga is in the middle there. Isn't it that it, it, mm. it contains both good and bad? That's the mixture mm, of good. No, um, it's no. It's a dust. That's my understanding. No, there's a side of Kedusha and there's another side, which is Sitra Acha. Yes. And Sitra Acha is the Klippa. And the Klippa has two forms Klippas Noga and Klippas Gimel, Klippas of Right. But Klippas Noga is what, what, what we deal with on a daily basis to try and uh, be, do the beautiful. Oh, elevate. No, well, that, Yes That's the no. neutral stuff that we can oh, change and transform, oh, isn't it? Oh, oh, hold on. That's the stuff we deal with to do avoid a sabirurim. But we deal with Klippus Gimel Klippus all the time. That's the whole loisa say. We are Gimel Klippus Atomeus. That's why we can't touch them. So these two levels of Klippa are one side and Kedusha the other side. Yeah. But the world we live in is basically Klippus Noga, except for what we do our Torah and mitzvahs, isn't it? Well, it's full of good Gimel Klippus of Timaeus. All right. All the, all the prohibited things. Yes, right? but also, okay, but say, sure. uh, 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 eliminate, you know, you're not going to be trafe, we're not going to be immoral, we're not going to kill anybody. Right, we're not going to deal with Gimel Klippus of Timaeus, but even though, God forbid, some of us, some of the people do. And, yes, they schlep okay. it, and they schlep the life divorce not only into Klippus Noga, but worse into Gimel Klippus Okay. Yes. But what we... Yeah. Right. But I don't think it, I, I don't, well, right. you are separating the two types of Klippa. Fine. I'm, no, I'm putting them together. Kedusha, right? And the opposite of Kedusha. Sitra, you can start with Sitra The side of Kedusha and the other side. And in the other side are two levels of Klippa. That's all. Okay. I have distinguished Klippas Noga from Klippas Satame. Yeah, sure they're sure they're distinguished, but they're both Klippa. That's all. It's Klippa and Kedusha. Okay. Right. And it's the result Klippa. of it. Yeah, I understand. Okay. But it's mixture. It's a mixture of good it's and bad. It's a mixture not of good bad. and bad. It's not all bad, but it's all Klippa. <laughs> okay. Right. We'll leave it at that. But there, there's Klippa that we can Mavara, and there's Klippa yeah. that we can't we can't Mavara. Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. I guess even with fruit, there are some peels that you can eat. That some peels that are you they're good. Yeah, but they're not prohibited, you know, the peels. There are some which are nutrition nutritious for us and some which are not. But that's but the ones you can't eat are not gimoclipus of tomatoes because they're not prohibited from you. No, the I'm prohib- just like an analogy, mm-hmm. just using it as yeah, a- yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a level. It's a good analogy. There are even in in in, a, in one domain. There are two levels. That's that's an analogy for that. Good. Okay. Right there. That means let's go further. Uh, we are now, if you're looking in the classical time, you're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines up from the bottom. Um, in fact, we're starting uh, Shabbos on the 19th. It's after a period. Behine. 
Yaakov, back to our Pasuk here, right? Yaakov, Hevel Nachalat Soikusiv. It's written, we've had this Pasuk, we brought it yesterday, that Yaakov, a rope is his inheritance. We brought that Pasuk from Devorah. So we'll just to recap a little, Adarag Marshall, but we use it as an example, and we're using it just to remind ourselves here. Kamehavel, like a stranded rope. Now, but we're using it differently now. We talked about it, the stranded rope breaking the strands, right? 613 strands, and you clip one of them, you're weakening the flow of Kedusha. But another, let's say we have the rope, it's up here above, the one end of it above, and the other is below. So Roshe Lamaila, it's the head of the rope is above, Roshe Hasheni Lamata, and the second is down below. So Im Yim Shochodam if a person will shake the top, Oh, excuse me, the bottom. The second, down here below. So if we do things down here below, shaking the rope, that will also cause a draw a vibration, a shaking in the top, in the head. As much as you are able to shake it to, or, or to draw it down. The Chochamamish. So, in other words, our deeds down here below have an effect on what we get from above. I mean, that's not a surprise, right? The arousal from below affects an arousal for, to, uh, above, whether it's an arousal on the side of Kedusha, which will affect more Igeula, more revelation of Kedusha, or whether it's an arousal from below on the Sitar Achra, on the other side in one of the two domains of Clipper. It will have an effect in terms of what we're going to get from above. So Kochamam is similarly to the rope, Marshall. The Shodesh Nishim Sa'odam, when it comes to the root of the soul of a person, the Makaira, and its, 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 its root and source, Mibichinus Heitata, that's the Heitata Malchus, that's the proximate original origination of the Nevesh it has, it has Matthias, it has existence in more rarefied forms, deeper than that, but its manifestation is in Malchus of Atsilas. Malchus is the, the, again, Malchus is the Shechina, and the Shechina is the proximate source for the Nevesh of a person. And the, that, that Nevesh, uh, that proximate source, which we said is Malchus, is the Heitata, the second level, so here we see, we're beginning to hopefully see our responsibility, this institution, responsibility, ability that's responsive, uh, whatever, leave that aside. Our responsibility and our ability to bring the rope, the, to bring the head of the rope wherever we will go, right? <clears throat> so if we go, that we go into the clipper, either one of those two domains of clipper, or the other way. That will that's the difference between Gaulus and Gaula. So the Heitatur, because all of all of this revelation or or blocking that revelation is occurring in Malchus, which is the Heitatur, the lower level He. So Humanshik, so if we similarly to this holy this rope. So how you shake it, that's the way the flow is that you're going to get, that we're going to get from above. <clears throat> if we choose, God forbid, to have our deeds reflect the side of the other side, which is called the side of evil, <clears throat> and, our, our, and the side of, where our thoughts are directed not to Kedusha, <clears throat> into the chambers of the Sitar Akhra. To the other side. If that's the place where we go, so that's the place from which we're going to draw energy down uh, and we'll receive our thought and be received into our thoughts and deeds. So you are what you what you think. You are where you talk, you are where you do. According, you can clean the labushin or the other way around. You can restore the continuity of the breath, or you can block the breath. You can make the ula or the opposite. 
ומפני שהוא הוא הממשה, and since we're the ones who are doing it, we're the ones who are causing it, it's a very interesting expression, because we're, we're causing it, שהוא הוא הממשך להם, השפוע, we're causing the, the flow, לא חין הוא נטל חלק בריישו, בריש, we take the best parts, because we're the ones who are the operators here, I mean, this is a very, I mean, to me, very powerful, meaning what? It's all up to us. How many times did the Rebbe say, Tut vas irken, do what you can, because it's all up to us whether there's going to be ge'ula or the opposite of ge'ula. The Daila Maven, and this is, should be easy for anybody to understand, the Alter Rebbe says. V'zehu she'amru, and this is what our sages have said, our sages have said in Pirkei Avois, it's not in our hands to understand the peacefulness of the evil person or the suffering that ends or the suffering of the righteous. It's not in our hands, Dafka. Klaimer, what does it mean in our hands? Where we're in the realm of doing. The hands are you do stuff. The realm of doing is now. And this time is the Zaman HaGalas. This is the time of Gullus where we have the opportunity to bring the Gula. After the Horban, right? After the Horban, which we just came through, we see the opportunity for rebuilding. And we re do rebuild. We build Eretz Yisrael. We rebuild Eretz Yisrael. And that Eretz Yisrael down here he has a source up above in Eretz Yisrael, up above. And we are the builders. We are we're the hands of God to build the, the holy temple again in our hearts and in the holy land and to bring godliness to the world. And this that we choose the opposite, God forbid, is what we call, is what is called the exile of the Shekhinah Kaviyotel, if you could say such a thing. Because again, God is always present all the time, right? He isn't in exile but his manifestations are in exile, right? And we're schlepping his manifestations, we're dragging his manifestations into exile, or the opposite, we down here are shaking the rope with our good deeds, and the head of the rope now is also shaking with the open Kedusha, and the eyes are opened from all levels of, in all, all levels of reality. But if not, the other way around, we're drawing down life force into the other side, not into the side of the Kedusha, of Kedusha and redemption, but into the side of, of Goyla, the opposite. Which God's life force, the word for Nefesh is life force, the life force of Hashem despises this. He, he hates it. Yet he's given us our choice to make it happen or not. And now we wrap this one up, bring it back to our subject, Shuva. So when a person does Shuva, again, Toshuv He, when we restore the He, when we take Malchus, when we take the life force that's invested in us and the whole world out of exile, that's called Oise Shuva. Bringing Gaula is Alta Lo Shuva, Alta Lo Gaula. That when we return, when we were in Brack, realign ourselves on the side of Kedusha as opposed to the other side. So when we oisit the Shuvah Nechayinu, when we do a proper shuva, as I mesalak mehem hashpo, all the negative energies depart completely. Shehamshik b'maisa b'mashabda, which we had previously drawn down through our deeds and our thoughts. Ki b'tishuvosa, because when we do shuva, when the nation does shuva, when individuals do shuba, which we call in Hasidus the Geula Pratis, when we bring the Geula to ourselves and we reverberate that out and help others with that, so we have the Geula Klali. So, to that Shuva, we return the Shekhina to her place. And this is what it means to return the lower hay. To return the lower hay, nibachin is gullus from the category of gullus, but kamashikosiv 
this interesting drush over here. It says, "Veshuv Hashem elakecha and shivosecha," and it says, "You could read it: Hashem will return his captives." Shuv Hashem elakecha, God, God, your God will return his captives. Claimer, im shivosecha. You can read it in Kamaim and Rizal that He is returning. Look at the pasuk: "Veshuv Hashem." God returns, and as the Alter Rebbe says, not the Heshiv, not he causes to return, the Heshiv Lenemer. It doesn't say we will cause God to return. We are bringing God himself, if you can say such a thing, back to the state, which is the opposite of hatred, which is what the state that he loves, and the state which he's yearning for us to bring forth from him, which is the state of Geur. And that's to today in Shabbos. It is up to us. And it's, in a certain way, very simple. Toshuvei. Makshav divra masa, open eyes, all aligned with what God wants. Easier said than done, but nevertheless, hopefully, this gives us a bit of an infusion of kayach, knowing that it can and is and will and is happening. And it's all up to us. I have a weird right, question. Good. We have time. Love, love weird question. Yeah, I'm not going any. No, I haven't. What about the woman's day. I'm not going. Good. What about the woman's role in wasting seed if you're using birth control? I, I really uh, mean, how, that you mean, part. You mean the, this particular sin of Moitsu Zerul Batala, of bringing forth seed? Is that what you yeah. mean? Yes. Uh, it's always understood. I mean, it's it's definitely uh, uh, something that goes on men, because of the, the the notion the notion is that uh, I mean it's brought from the Torah with those two folks who did that were men. I've never heard anything about. I mean, of course, there is that activity that can have that a woman can do as well. I've never heard it associated with actually. Remember, Zara. A married seed. woman can use birth control and, and it's not considered wasting seed. Uh, that you're talking about. No. Yeah. In certain conditions, absolutely. In certain conditions, certain uh, yeah, conditions, certain uh, where there are certain things going on, number one, the, the one that's always brought affecting the woman's health, etc. Birth control can be used. Halakha allows for birth control in of certain cases. Right. Just like Hashem, you know, the Torah allows for um, abortion in certain cases. If that's your question, yes, that can be. But levatala means really you're just doing it uh, for your own selfish pleasure, and it has no tachlis, it has no result. So I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. A different question. Yeah. Um, what would be something helpful you could offer from your own um, uh, toolkit that when a person is about to make a decision and they're trying to think it through um, to be the, let's say, the choice on God's path, what could one bring into that decision-making moment to clarify making a good decision? Well, I can bring it from my toolkit, but you can bring it from your own toolkit because if you just think about what do you really want? So for instance, I'll give you an example. Uh, <clears throat> I'm at work yesterday and there's a disagreement in the office. And this is really, <laughs> I'll tell you how simple this stuff can be uh, to bring the ULA. <laughs> um, there's a disagreement in the office about the air conditioning. It was a hot day yesterday, right? Some like it hot, some like it cold, right? And in approaching it, uh, I was very hot. And I wanted the air conditioner higher. A woman in the back was very cold. She wanted it lower. And she started screaming at me, right? I didn't scream, but I got irritated. And later on, after I calmed down, 
I thought to myself, I could have thought to myself these words, but where I didn't think these words, but this was the net of it, which is, this is not, this anger that I'm, that I have welling up in me, and some of which came out, uh, it's not Gaulada, right? There are d- deeper things going on, and there's, I have a good relationship with this woman worker in the back, so I apologized. And it was motivated in part, I can't say that it was in, entirely, from how to behave in a, in a way that's aligned with what the Torah wants us to be aligned with. And these moments are probably all over the place in, in everyone's, everyone's life. You know, when you, if, and if you're a bit more mature in your consciousness, just look at the situation before, if you can, it takes a bit more maturity not to get triggered. Right. Once you're triggered, then you're in apologizing. But apologizing and asking for forgiveness is a mitzvah. Get to a mitzvah. Just get to a mitzvah. And, do, and with all your heart, you're getting to Geula. That's my toolkit, part of my toolkit. Does that help you? Just get to a mitzvah. Turn it around. Flip it from one side to the other by doing what Hashem wants and his Torah commands in this particular situation. Does that help? Thank you. That was, a, that was a very interesting and good example because I think often when we want to make a choice, we want to make it at the very beginning, the right choice. And we're not right. always sure. But, or as you say, a situation occurs where one could fall into something with having less consciousness. So it's always very good to know since we're talking about tshuva. Sure, even, that... even three moments later, you could say, oops, that didn't quite work out. Let's see if we can make it better. And that's, and that's you know, Godel Shuva. Great. It gives us an opportunity for Shuva. Godel Shuva, the maybe the Fuwala oil, it brings healness to the, healing to the world, as well as the Ula to the world. So he's it built into this is, we're good. There you will fall. You may fall. I'm aware, God, that, that, that falling is part of the deal here. Darkness is part. I'm aware of Gullis, uh, you know. You brought it on, but I'm well aware of it, and it's bothering me, God says, this gullus. But I'm giving you the tool to, to get rid of it. It's called shuva. So just trust you. Just every last moment is an opportunity for gula. That's such a good example of how it's all in our hands, and when we move the rope down here, it moves yeah. up there. Yep. Yeah. I, I also wanted to comment about um, you said that Hashem is not in Gullus, manifestations of Hashem are in Gullus. Right. I, I, I said that in other places you'll see that Hashem is in Gullus. The reason I say that is in, in his essence is never because Ani Hashem Leishanisi, I am Hashem, I haven't changed. That I, that essence of God, is not subject to all the vagaries of change. That's that's why I said it that way. But of course, you will see in other places that you're drawing God into Gullus. In fact, we did that today, yeah. Yeah. And he said, you're taking me into, the, into, the, into, into captivity. But the essence never gets captive. And it's just like the godly soul. The essence of the godly soul never gets sullied. It's just the expressions of the godly soul, which can get a little cloudy. So, Ubatain, therefore, hmm, a lot of people here. I think therefore, that's... don't focus on other people and why they're doing the wrongdoings that they're doing and why it's going well for them. Say that, um, say that again. You're coming in a little blue. Sorry, you're coming in, I was. You're... You're coming in blurry. Say, can you do it again? What about now? No, the better. Good. I was saying that um, not to focus on why other people are doing well, even though they're or seemingly well, pleasant, um, even though they're doing the wrong things, and focus on what you can do. Think more about what you can do. Yeah, what you can do. Yeah, to it, but it can. 
to do everything you can because you're the only one you're in control of, hopefully. Uh, Rivka. And to maybe make that pause before you yeah. jump in, see which way, which direction are you going? <laughs> exactly, right. Think before you jump. <laughs> Uh, Elisheva. Uh, create Geula by your choices, minute by minute. Yes. I mean, so look, uh, this is why I say this chapter, I think, is a real, you know, object lesson in how close Geula is. It's as close as your next thought. Fabulous. Make, yeah. All right, guys. Thank Great. you. And, Thank uh, you very much. Shabbat good Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, thank you. Thank you.